Hello everyone. The topic for the day is HR analytics. We will speak exactly about what exact what can be deciphered from the data that has been collected or been accumulated by the HR as a source of activities and how do we analyze them, test them and help us the decision makers to come up with appropriate outcomes. So this HR analytics comes into it. So the reason is why HR analytics first and foremost thing that comes around it. First and foremost thing, it is a forward looking thing. You have to go about it. It is all about your workforce planning. <clears throat> then comes the talent acquisition or the recruitment in terms of the employees that you actually hire. You have to maintain the source, the quality of the employees despite people joining you people leaving you as an organization how do you manage them manage so that the productivity of the organization doesn't dip then comes the diversity yes very true very required in fact diversity builds the other building block of an organization the more the diverse the employees are from you need to understand that the organization actually caters its products its services to customers who are from different walks of life. So it is better to have the same mentality within the workforce also. So diversity effectiveness is a prerequisite for workforce analytics. Comes the talent potential and progression. Now we are talking about succession planning. We are talking about future orientation. We are talking about the gaps that can arise due to certain mess ups which may be beyond your control. Your control of your organization. Your control of probably outlook or planning. So that is what is workforce analytics is all about today. In short, I am letting you know that this is being proactive. HR analytics, works with analytics allows you to uh, be a, act as a shock observer for future uncertainties that might be going around it. So it is better that you go for being proactive altogether. So what are the key success factors? Number one, always take baby steps. Start small. Then as with the passage of time, start increasing your speed slowly but steadily build momentum onto it if you look at a certain data point if you look at certain anomalies if you think certain things are going good why not build upon it why not address the issues we are talking about nothing but focusing on your capabilities the unique capability the unique sourcing the unique strength that comes around you why not capitalize upon it and this is where analytics helps it to you to make you understand what are you good at using existing technology as an investment remember this thing is very true in, in this dynamic world, people are changing, tastes are changing, processes are changing and technology is changing at a faster rate. Technology is a, with a blink of an eye, it moves from one platform to another platform. So why don't build on technology and if you have the certain groundwork on an existing technology, build upon it. You look at it as an investment and enhance it. So consider cloud to jumpstart the effort probably yes now we are storing all the data not only within the servers but then servers are get, getting bygone now is that age of big data when probably the data are so much accumulated that is better that we save it in the cloud and definitely as with the passage of time we are changing our habits we are changing our production process we are changing to the taste of the customer so utilize what you learn learn what you earn and earn through your learnings so typical hr challenges number one there is no perfect view of a workforce profile you cannot determine that a younger workforce is the optimum workforce you cannot determine whether the experienced workforce is an optimum workforce neither can you state that the mix of younger generation and older profile will actually give you an effective and probably much more uh, resilient workforce so there are no accuracies as far as, far as workforce are concerned so need to understand the visibility of effective 
effectiveness. This is very true of HR program. The visibility, you need to quantify certain things. And here it comes, the HR analytics, which will stress you out, which will identify you. What are you good at? So poor alignment with talent management is another reason for which things doesn't work around it. So this is very true. There has to be a proper alignment with the objective of the organization, the corporate strategy, and with the talent or the employee that you people hire. You cannot compare an apple to an orange. Remember this. So no standard HR reporting infrastructure builds upon here. That is what is true. Now, what I wanted to stress out here is as an HR analytics, the report that you generate this particular fiscal year will not be as vibrant or as relevant in the forthcoming years as such. So you have to change the formatting of reporting. You have to be much more reactive and proactive in all these changes. Time-based gathering data of managing report, something which can uh, done in a rudimentary or a traditional methodology wherein data are manually to be collected. It is basic wastage of effort, basic wastage of money, and we are not even stressing on the time wastage as such. It is all about that thing. With HR analytics, the challenges out here is everything you get it in one dashboard. It is collated that comes around it. So look at it. We are talking about the aligning HR strategy with corporate goals how do you go with first and foremost is HR analytics strategies that goes around it. You need to decide which all software that you want to go around it. You need to decide the fundamental reports that you will be banking upon it. You now tell the health checkup the metrics that around that is vital to the survival of your organization in the industry. Define the HR scorecard and the KPI definition. Key performance indicators, remember, are different and varies from industry to industry, company to company. So you then come with analysis as to what can be done. Here is the analysis, whether you want to build it, buy it, and so on and so forth. So that is what you look into it. So we are going for vendor basis, tool basis, business intelligence analytics, our return on investment that we go around. We have to take this into consideration altogether. So define those selected tools, define the business intelligence that you want to implement or which you want to gather around it. And then comes the HR warehouse strategies of analytics is all about. And once you have done it, once the report have been presented, once the reports have been generated, you need to keep a log of it. Nothing else will help you if you do not keep a log of it and probably improvise on an analytics software, improvise on the solution that you want to go around it and tinker up. I again uh, remind you to tinker with, with various tools and various reports and the reporting format thereby. That is very important. So what are the uh, value propositions altogether? Number one, I keep on saying it is a dashboard kind of driven things. You have all the report in your dashboard on your screen and probably as on when on what on basis you can pull those reports to your requirement. Number second would be it is very lucidly presented. Even a layman will be able to understand or enrich. And why? Why the layman will be able to understand? It is represented not in a character user interface, but graphic user interface. One. Next thing is the data are already verified altogether. This has been collected at the sources. So what does it mean? It means that it is faster. If it is faster, that means it reduces cost. It reduces efforts. It reduces time altogether. So there is a proper data integration coming around it. We need to understand the proper data integration that come builds in HR analytics altogether. There, this is where you can help and make correct decision as when on required. The decisions are done on actual time basis and therefore you can be able to curate things for your employees and probably manage your talent, probably manage the human capital we're going around it. So look at here, here is it all about it. The HR analytics and value proposition goal, dashboard driven, higher efficiency, reduced cost, better integration, decision making, uh assistance and human capital management is all what goes around with hr analytics position so what are we going around it see 
there are many things which can be addressed around it. We can go for learning. We can go for health and safety, the survey, the workforce environment, the leave register, the uh, compensation, the benefit and the performance. Remember, whatever I have marked you is a tertiary requirement of HR analytics as the case might be. These are all tertiary to the things. The primary report which it can generate, which probably might be required by you is of LND, like from LND only comes the performance in the training thing. These are offshoot. The primary is the workforce smart or the employee score, employee uh, diversity that goes around it. Then we have the HR scorecard or the K, uh, KPS, key performance indicator. We can have the recruitment pool or the bench strength which is ready altogether. We can predict it. We can go for the analysis of HR and mining analytics which comes with the Op uh, option of giving you a vital number of decisions to be taken around it and not the less least part would be the money involved how are you going to plan your rewards how are you going to plan your wages the salaries the perks the benefit this is the crux of hr analytics so we have the tertiary elements and the primary element remember most of the times it is the decision is based on the primary element at the base work report that needs to be generated but then we, we go to the tertiary element when we have to find out certain pertinent solution that might be bothering the top management per se this needs to be understood so let us visit it all together as a recapitulation <clears throat> what do we look into it number one many organizations have high quality hr data no doubt about it this is very high Probably they have a particular number of systems, they have uh, requisite log notes, they have requisite data which has been there, which you just need to mine it out for and learn it for your compensation benefit. You cannot, probably what happens is, what is the problem is, despite the availability of so many data, you still struggle to probably come up with right solution at the right moment you are failing to predict the trends so what is what is happening you are not able to minimize risk or probably you are not maximizing your decision making efforts altogether so the cost of attrition is what what happens if you are not able to reduce your cost yes we are looking for hr analytics this is a requirement which is done we, when we are hiring people who are not up to the mark, then you need to get detrimental that HR analytics is a must requirement for you. Data driven insight to make decisions are always better than judgmental. Something which can be backed upon, something which can be argumentative that tells you about the data, why a particular situation has happened and arisen. So we know how to recruit, whom to recruit, how to onboard and what all information that needs to be given to the employees and engage them. So the objectives, why do we require HR analytics reporting? Please remember the objectives remain. The attrition rate, please reduce it if we can do around it. We need to have excellent talent that is about the right fitment. Then we have to go about not an exorbitant compensation but a just compensation that we go around it and definitely yes we should have a great linkages between employment engagement score is all about it a great linkages that needs to be taken which we have to carry it out which we need to come convey to our employees altogether. So the need of HR is to reduce cost, is to be data driven decision makers, to is to make a high quality data relevant. So that is what we are looking at. Now, HR analytics uh, capabilities, these are the level one, level two, level three. I would love to describe each one in the subsequent three slides before I wind up this particular presentation. Remember, level one is reporting basic metrics. Basic metrics are your recruitment. Basic metrics are wages. Basic metrics might be your leaves. Basic metrics. So uh, the frequency and percentage, the various cuts are key to highlight, probably on a monthly basis, quarterly basis, or a uh, yearly basis. Now, we do it with the software as, as a service, SAS, or a report format that comes around it. The techniques are basic. It can be in frequency, it can be means, arithmetic, geometric, harmonic, whatever you want to go around it. It can be median, and then the percentage around it. So, level one is a descriptive analysis. Level two is derivation. 
now this is where you need to go around and it is being projective altogether about certain hr operational metrics which help us to assess what exactly is happening in the organization how efficient the hr function is is to remain the saas software as a service then comes the technique is the mean variances we talk about the six sigma variance we we, we talk about the mean we, we talk about the harmonic mean we talk about the control limit with the ratio the percentage the last one is what is the best one which helps us in making decision the predictive analysis based on the historical hr data attrition forecast performance management compensation tools are remaining the same thing more or less we can again have a regression analysis correlation analysis time based analysis cluster analysis and so on and so forth that comes around it which help you to go up and predict what kind of model or what kind of outcome will come out if you opt a certain methods of solving a sol uh, problem so let us go to the level 1 so what do it uh, what does it have in the dashboard so basic frequency of certain hr related for example the what are the basic principle the number of employees the number of people living the organization the number of people joining the organization this can be further fragmented by region by country by business by process by service by age by gender by level of service or grade of service by ethnicity or background by tenure for how long they have been working around please understand age is the employee's age tenure for how long he or she is with the organization and special talent as in extra responsibility and things like that so you have a headcount and attrition number then we can have the training and learning dashboard it is all about how many trainings have been one the incumbent has undergone what are the registrations that have been done how many have been completed how many have been successfully uh, accomplished this is what in training and learning dashboard is all about it then comes the performance tracking report we talk about absence and even grievances disciplinary actions employee appraisals review and accomplishment it talks about the performance nothing only about the performance everywhere including the leaves that goes around it including any grievance handling or disciplinary issue that the person might have incurred request tracking is vacancies skills matching competencies so on and so forth payroll related issues would be the injury time that labor that goes around it remember this is level 1 and basic report which has been given it gives you an overview of exactly how the organization is faring in uh, right now at of time level 1 analysis i have just given a pick of certain reports that can be given out here look at it it's the bar graph that i have shown it in terms of turnovers as well as voluntary and voluntary to again given you on a quarterly quarter basis i have desperately taken an age old decade old kind of report for you so that no no litigations and, and remember this particular video has been meant only for academic purposes still proper precaution have been taken the company names have been obliterated and can be located anywhere and everywhere think it as a sample organization but believe me this is exactly the report that comes around it so we have forwarded it bifurcated into quarters and one basis and probably why the reasons are out on a different basis see one one data one data set presented in a two different fa fashion so turnover rates are acceptable in uh, last two quarters compensation and location shift are two main reason so the same data into two different reports one and two and you see what the uh, insight comes around it now comes the action points or what decision needs to be taken you need to understand and revise the compensation strategy time to concentrate on incentive probably properly uh, probably in last quarter to quarters and employee retention strategy let us talk about the level 2 level 2 is all about metrics now here comes the turnover ratio it is number of attrition number of people living in the organization in a year vis-a-vis -vis or versus or division divided by average number of people present at that particular organization so that gives us a turnover ratio then comes the joiners rate or accession rate is the number of employee appointed and has been on the payroll divided by again the average number of people within the organization so this is the joiner rate which comes around it then comes the stability index is the 
number of FTE, FTE, please remember is full time employees with more than three years of tenure in organization vis a vis current head road. So that tells me the how wonderful the organization is all about it, how loyal my employees are all about here. Then comes the low performer management, which tells about the denominators employed with a low performing rating last year and numerators. Please, this is below. This is in the division size. It is all on the below part of it. Denominator is below and remember numerator is above on the division side. So numerator is distribution above the employee across number one. It can be improved performance rating in the current year. Number two, same performance rating in the current year. So it can be different fragmentation which can be divided upon and we come into a low performer management that needs to be taken about it. Then comes the last and the least one would be the promotion ratio is the number of promotion in a period of time. It can be one year, two year and average head, head count over a period of time divided by average. So it's a very simple thing that has been given to you. Now let us come and understand what are the metrics, insights and the action point. Number one, the ratio of the new uh, and the replacement higher as a percentage of a organization or employment. So what happens? A higher number indicates hidden cost which actually is detrimental to productivity so we need to have a joiner rate which should be lower right because anything higher means we we need to train them retrain them so probably spend a lot of uh, amount of time in training not only amount in tra in terms of training but also in, in terms of recruitment and selection process so action plan is to focus on the new hire and employ retention strategy give them proper wages incentivize them and probably take good care of them so that they hang around it and that is what the action point would be so we need to decide it we come to the last level the level three it's all about attrition forecasting now it is here about taking decisions probably giving you predictive analysis altogether so given historically the past data that we are talking about and probably predicting the future this will help us in uh, adding into a recruitment measure in formatting or probably uh, probably satisfying or looking for newer talent elsewhere if the action for attrition forecast is given to us and that can be done only when we study the past data around it then comes the attrition segmentation now we are, this might be technical non-technical skilled people non-skilled people lower rung of this uh, organization higher rung of the employees segmentation can be done based on employee profile based on attrition rate the first one was attrition forecasting and then we go to attrition profilings altogether that is segmentation so now this needs to be taken care now you are focusing on with who what kind of employees you are actually going to hunt then comes the top performer segmentation employee based on the profile and the performance indices this will help you in uh, top performing and the characteristic now you will need to learn ki who are the people who are hanging on to the organization who are the people who are actually performing or giving them their best and probably exceeding the ex expectation of the organization can you have certain people with a similar characteristic in the new joiners list so that is what the top performer segmentation will tell it to you that becomes handy for you for when you are looking for recruitment of a new talent then come comes the compensation analysis and compensation tools a tool that predicts optimal compensation for a given employee based on the capabilities and company policies and market condition very very relevant so these are the things that needs to be taken care of new higher strategies the new higher strategy will build by performing attrition segmentation in combination with a top performer analysis as the case might be so voice of the employee and the drivers this is true so we have the new higher strategies that goes around it it is all about attrition segmentation based upon it you go and build your recruitment policies or recruitment strategies altogether select the people from the attrition segmentations and probably give them a voice of the employee to the new employees so that they have a say in the development of organization. They have a sense of belongingness towards the organization. A sense of ownership do creeps in up. That's what we need to understand. Look at attrition forecasting which we goes around it. Again, the, uh, 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 anonymous company with an old age data that I'm trying to do. Remember, this is just an uh, illustration, nothing beyond it. So predicting and 
probably forecasting near future attrition rate that goes on high and high and probably this can be said that this is going to flow this way this is where you got to go around it if you if you are weighing and sitting on 2022 the year 2022 and trying to predict what is going to happen in 2024 or in the year 2024 so we come to attrition segmentation look at attrition segment as a full time full time employee segmentation with higher percentage is the university or the college student other than then now remember this is just an illustr illustration so we have overall attrition is 15% but the higher end or the younger generation who are just passed out from the university is at 35% other are 28% similarly age is somewhere around less than 28 which is attrition of 20% and the next would be more than 28 so younger generation have a higher attrition rate but a, a generous middle class uh, middle age person with the age of 30 to 40 or 45 they might have a little less percentage of an attrition that can be further bifurcated into different portfolios and so on and so forth i hope this becomes um, elaborated enough for you to understand this is what attrition segmentation is all about it remember to utilize it and remember to replace the employees now top performer segmentation is overall full-time employees population of 20 percent with a higher population and look into it if you have again it is again been refl uh, reflected that the younger graduate the young graduates have just passed out from the university colleges they give a whooping percentage of more than 55 percentage giving a overall uh, high performance similarly would be the other performance now we can again bifurcate it below the age of 28 and above the age of 28 look at it still below the age it is 30 percent below the younger generation is actually performing well than the overall um, not so young generation as as you may call it and then can be bifurcated remember full-time employee segment is at least the top percentage of the so we talk about hr reporting and analysis level one or so stage one divide overall compensation in major component that comes into it you have to give an incentive you have to give a basic you have to give other fringe benefits and so on and so forth study historical data using software as a services probably this will help you out as to why some people are hanging on why some people are performing well better than expected use predictive analysis in SAS, which is multi-linear performances that is there embedded in the system when the hr analytics as you uh, employ it and using above model i have given you a fair model a fair idea about what exactly can be taken remember this is just an illustration and just give to give you an idea your organization your company can be tailor-made to their requirement remember all companies are unique and their requirements are different from one another and definitely use optimal compensation for a given so HR reporting analytics level three. Now how we go around the algorithm for fair compensation. So divided four quadrant. Did I say about it? Let's say the company would have 30%, the employees would have 35%, the market 25%, and others 10%. So what is company? The company's philosophy of giving what kind of wages? It can be certain companies might be very lenient in giving wages, wherein certain companies might be very stringent when meting out wages. And then there would be demand of the employees that goes around it. So certain employees are again, again very skewed towards the wages in either fashion, be it on a higher end or on the lower end. And then you have to marry those things with the market going rates that plays it. And last but not least, probably certain environmental policies that comes around it. Let's say uh, the company is located in a no-fly zone or let's say it's at a very... Uh, uh, very difficult to reach position or regions as such so you have to give an extra allowances to go around it so you need to tell it and then budget for it look for the urgency and the impact before you actually come with the final composition so this is what you need to give a weightage altogether to each component of budget what is the urgency that you need to fill them or man the position what is the impact that is going to have in the productivity of the organization assign weightage to it and then arrive into a final compensation as a reporting tool so voice of an employee is reporting the drivers let's say overall satisfaction a satisfactory index 
altogether can be cut around it. The driver's analysis is identify the main drivers of an employee satisfaction. There might be people, there might be employees who are more interested with the housing accommodation, more interested in the education part of their wards, more interested into the club activities or recreational activities. So you need to define them and find out with the help of a survey. Driver analysis, which can be to merging the survey responder with the employee performance. So there we can give, if we cannot give a great education, probably we can sustain uh, the expenses of a certain number of children of the employees into a decent uh, tuition fees of the schools and so on and so forth or let's say the hospital benefits can be extended to, and we can empanel the best hospital within the region that can uh, take care of the uh, medical emergencies of the employees and the families probably and the company is going to bear the brunt of it so analysis of the verbatim com comment now basically at times what happens is not everything can be documented at times people say it out and you need to note it out these document non-documented or should i say verbatim comment or should i say the verbal comment as such can be either way positive neutral or negative so you need to understand that identify the and how do you understand them? understand them is to look at the frequency by which they are saying about positive comments or neutral comments or negative comments so on and so forth if you can identify the frequency around it nothing can go wrong so with this i come to an end of this presentation thank you for watching this video